I'm Nadia Shamis, and we're here at Five Points Fest with the dynamic duo themselves, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. You're watching Comics First. You are definitely known for your work on Batman, and you are reuniting again for this August, DC Metal. Oh, wow, it must feel so good to reunite. How does it feel? Oh, it feels incredible. This guy is like my brother from another mother. I love him. I've been waiting to get back together with him, and we've been planning it forever. So ever since like we decided to take a break from each other, it's a story that I've been working on, sharing with him. So. We knew that if we got back together, the only reason to do it would be if we could just sort of blow things apart and be, you know, do something that was much bigger than Batman, involved the entire DCU, was sort of a classic DC event, summer event, bonkers, out of control stuff. It basically involves the Justice League discovering that there is, in addition to the multiverse we know, a multiverse that's made of dark matter and dark energy, the same way kind of our universe is almost like a fraction of all the matter and energy uh, uh, that actually comprises the universe, the idea is that there is a dark multiverse in addition to our multiverse and that it's about to invade. So it's sort of a completely <laughs> sort of uh, epic, ambitious project. It's something that we've been talking about forever. And I'm really excited. It kind of gives us all the toys. It's like Superman, Flash, Green Lantern, you know, everybody from Mr. Terrific and Plastic Man to Constantine appears in it. It's like totally, totally zany. Uh, and uh, it's just, we really want people to just kind of release their inner rock god and have fun this summer. It's not, you know, it's not um, grimdark. It's not, uh, you know, heavy. It's about stuff that really matters to me. It is. It's about, it's essentially about the ways in which history can fall backwards when you least expect it. But it's also meant to be kind of celebratory, you know, uh, again, like we want people to enjoy it and just really have fun this summer. And so we invite everybody to, to come be a part. Scott's a great writer in the fact that there's so many levels to his writing, you know, and I've worked with some great writers and stuff and I've had a lot of fun drawing all, all kinds of books, you know, and, uh, but you could peel away layer after layer of Scott. And I just told him earlier when we were hanging out at the bars, it's like uh, if you watch the old Star Trek where they played three-dimensional chess, that's kind of how he writes, you know? I mean, you could write great stories that will sell and be popular and everything like that, and they're rather one-dimensional. But uh, there's so much if you just keep exploring Scott's writing behind each story that he writes. Everything's so methodical and thought out and layered. And... Um, I think that's one of the most enjoyable things that I find in it is, is, is reading through all those layers myself, you know? And I've been at it for a long time, kind of jaded. So if that guy can excite me, he must be doing something pretty, pretty okay. For me, I mean, Greg is the best in the business, hands down. Like, and I was telling him at the bar, all our stories are at a bar. But no, I, we really were. We were hanging out right before this. And I was saying, like, the thing that makes his style special for me is that it's entirely crafted to be about story. So it has this incredible anatomical precision, this comic dynamism that's really um, energetic and feels epic and over the top and bombastic. And yet there's also this sense of emotion that comes through in all the deep acting scenes. So it's elastic in a certain way, his style, but it's so his own. And there's such a, a, a stylistic signature to it. I know his work the second I see it, no matter what he's drawing. But it, it, that's because it's always so devoted to, sh to bringing out the emotional um, sort of uh, aspects of any story he's working on. He's the best. So, I, I mean, again, like, he's my brother. We're family. I'd work with him anywhere, anytime. So I couldn't be more excited about this one. We just get, we sort of have, like, all the toys all of a sudden. So I'm like, Greg, look at this, look at that. But at the end of the day, it's the truth. It's what he was saying about his art as well. Like, the reason that I sort of go to town you know, on the story is because he, you know, it, it wouldn't do justice to his art to bring anything less than a multifaceted, you know, narrative because his art is so deep and rich and layered that it deserves the best you can possibly give. So I'm really excited about it. It sounds amazing. So well, has your dynamic changed at all as a creative duo now that you've spent some time apart, you've done some projects with other people? Has anything changed between you guys? I, I think Scott 
and I are we're always changing. I mean, as much as things stay the same, we're always kind of tweaking and modifying the way we do things together um, because we're always, always searching for the best way. Uh, Scott and I come from different approaches, you know, how he was trained, how I was trained. and uh, But the, the common ground we have is we just want to give the very, very best comic book to the fans because, I mean, fans pay $4 a comic book now. I mean, that's a steep price. And the last thing you want them to go is that sucked, you know. And the last thing you want to hear is that you made somebody say, geez, I wasted four dollars." So, it's it's partly in wanting to give the most we can to fans. It's also us having pride in our craft, and it's also about putting egos aside. You know, you could have a lot of great talent in a room, but if their ego bumps up against each other and it's all about their ego instead of the end game which is the final product that you're providing to fans things can derail you know really quickly and uh, everybody on our team you know Scott myself John Glabion, FCO Palencia our egos are all we all have an ego don't get me wrong but we all make it secondary to the ultimate goal which is to make the best product so you know Scott started from giving me very very you know, overwhelmingly informative scripts uh, to go and, and this still makes me smile, to, and I will smile again as I tell you. He'll tell me what he wants, and he goes, or whatever you want, with a smiley, with an exclamation point and a smiley face. And when I get that smiley face, I just want to, like, pick him up, like a little <laughs> plus squeeze him Snyder doll, and go, I love you. You know, he's just, he's adorable, and he's great to work with, and we're always looking for the best and better way. Yeah, I mean, the best, the, the way to get the best is to give him the most room possible. So, you know, I'm trying, I think my style has adapted. I never learned as much from anyone I've ever worked with as I have from Greg, both in life, I think, as a friend, but also as a, as a writer. And what it boils down to is what I've, I've learned the most in terms of um, writing, I think, for in comics, is that when you work with somebody who, who really um, is a great visual storyteller, the more room you give them, the more they'll make the story better than you could as a writer on the page. So I try more and more every year, every project we work on, to give him more and more uh, latitude, more, more room to breathe. So with metal... You know, I'm used to writing like very, very full script, and like the the issue two is like eight, nine pages total. You know, as opposed to like a 25, 30 page script. Now, speaking of heavy metal soundtrack, you are definitely known for your rock aesthetic and your work in the rock world. You've done album covers, so uh, how can we see some of that aesthetic coming through in DC metal? <laughs> well, interestingly. The guy who's not as metal created the, a soundtrack for our, our book, actually, right? I, I And I did give you some input. I did, you know, I don't, I don't know how it influences me. I mean, you know, I am who I am. So whatever I do, you know, who I am comes through it. You know, it's, I don't give any thought. You know, what comes out comes out. So, and, uh, but yes, I am dyed in the wool, hardcore, heavy metal. Blank label society rules, strength, determination, merciless, forever. You know, that's what it's all about, man. That's life. So you said that there's a soundtrack. What kind of songs are on the soundtrack? Let's hear about this. Well, I just asked Greg. I mean, he initially, like, you know, I know he's such a big Black Label Society fan that I started listening to that a bit. And then when I was looking in, I, I, I do, like, a Spotify list, and what it does is it recommends all other things. So they had, like, Gojira, Five Finger Death Punch, Hell Yeah, all the <laughs> stuff that, like, he was like, these are my favorites. So I started listening to it and listen to it when I write the event. I, I found a bunch of other stuff, too, through other friends that are big metalheads and stuff that I really wound up loving. So it's a big mix on there. So I really, it, it's fun. I mean, we want it to be sort of, you know, genuinely metal. Like the event has like metal armor. It's about metal. It's about the nth metal and how it might connect to this dark multiverse. But at the same time, we want it to be mu very much about the spirit of that, the spirit of sort of someone going out and just rocking out. And to me, metal is sort of in-your-face, aggressive, not really giving a shit what anybody else thinks, but just being like, you know, this is me, and I I'm expressing myself in the loudest, most passionate way possible, and that's kind of what this is. So I hope, I hope it comes through. 
So you said before that you have been able to play with a lot of toys in that toy box. You've spent a lot of time in Batman's head, but who is your other favorite character to write in this event? There are other characters? I didn't even realize. No, the... <laughs> I mean, Batman. Batman is is always will always be my favorite, but Superman really is my my second favorite, and Diana is right up there as well. So they're the three main characters of the story. Uh, the Trinity uh, plays the biggest role. Superman has a quest, Diana has a quest, and Batman has a quest, and they really have to remind him. I mean, Batman really kind of has a, a a crisis where he feels like. I don't want to get to the bottom of this mystery for the first time in my life. This is a mystery I don't want to solve. And they have to kind of push him forward in their own ways. So um, they're a joy to write. I love writing Clark because he's always so he's so good-hearted. You know, and Batman always kind of shuts him down. <laughs> and then Diana I love because she takes the piss out of both of them where she's just like, you two just shut up and let's do this, you know? So it's a lot of fun in that regard. I like them both. So who has been your favorite to kind of design and draw in this event? Oh, well, well, I can't say because it hasn't been revealed yet, uh, you know, um, so I can't say, but it's like the most metal part of the book that I've designed seven special characters and uh, but I can't say what they are other than uh, fun, awesome and very hip metal. <laughs> So on to your kind of other creative projects. You just finished up your run of AD After Death with Jeff Lemire. And that was a very experimental book, a very heavy book, a very emotionally driven book. How does it feel to end something, a project like that? It, it's a great relief. I mean, that book was took a lot out of both of us. And it was a joy. I mean, I love working with Jeff. He's a really a, a dear friend. Um, and, you know, returning to prose was hard. It really, it was very um, nerve-wracking and, and uh, I had a lot of moments where I had a lot of anxiety and, and having a partner like that who just kept pushing me through was amazing and you know it's a deeply intimate book it has a lot of autobiographical stuff in it it's hard to you know hard to um, sometimes admit some of the things that you think are you know embarrassing about your own fears so I'm really really proud of it in that regard it was never done as anything that was built for anyone but the two of us so the fact that people have responded positively to it really means a lot you know because it was it really was like us talking like as friends about things that we know we both struggle with so it's a very touching very experimental very beautifully drawn book I recommend to everybody out there that you check it out and um, Harry now you did start out in prose you pulled a reverse Neil Gaiman yeah. and then you moved into comics do we see any returns to the prose world I don't know, you know, I mean, I'm having such a good time over here now. I have a book I'd really like to write with my son. That's that's the biggest thing is my son is 10 and we've been getting into a lot of middle grade books. So I have an idea for one that I talked to uh, him about and uh, I'd love to do that next year. Once I'm done with metal and I have a little bit more runway, I'd like to write that with him, with Jack. But outside of that, um, I'm really in this for a while. I mean, I love... The projects I have coming up, I mean, metal is my priority right now with Greg and Witches, and, and that's really it. So, yeah, I'm excited. I was going to ask you, we've been seeing some teasers for Witches Volume 2 finally. Is there any juicy details you can tell us about that? Yeah, well, we're doing two stories. One's going to start in Image Plus in August, and it's going to be a standalone that tells the history of a main character in the second arc, and the second arc starts in winter and it's going to be about five to six issues. It's going to keep going. So we're, we're heavy in it right now. We're about a good 30 pages in, 40 pages in. So we're just going to keep going. I'm really excited about it. So Greg, you've been working on also a very interesting, experimental, explosive book with Mark Miller. Um, you've been working on Reborn. And the final issue the, to, mid, uh, to wrap up the series is coming up. What is it like working on that book? And can you tell us anything about it? Well, working on it has been sheer fun because, I mean, when I was a kid growing up, you know, I, I worked with Frank Frazetta, which, you know, a lot of guys who do what I do also did. And uh, But I never had any uh, comic book experience where I could draw that kind of subject matter. You know, fantasy with dragons and warriors and all that kind of business. And uh, Mark just goes, hey, I, I got something I think you'd be perfect for. And, um, and certainly it was like being a kid again, you know, drawing all the kind of stuff I used to like to draw. 
and, uh, and, and getting to create it all from the ground up. So there's no doing wrong, you know, when, when, when it's your baby and you're, nothing exi has existed prior, no one could go, oh, I didn't like the way you did that. That was wrong. You didn't do that quite right. No, everything I do is right because it's never been done before, right? So that's, that's also beautiful. You can't make a mistake. And um, so anyway, that, that creating those worlds was fantastic. And also, as much as I love Scott's writing, he very rarely includes any of the female's persuasion into the writing. And so to have a female lead, <laughs> and to have a female lead, that was great. You know, it's like I almost forgot how to draw them. I go, I hope I remember how to draw women. I, I, I studied how to draw women. Let's see if I can still do it. You know, I was really nervous. And I had my wife, like, buy me some, like, uh, a bust of a woman for inspiration, you know. I bought her a wig and stuff just to be in the room, you know. And uh, and I go, but I never even looked at it, you know, because it it just it came back to me. Obviously, I had to draw, a, a, you know, a, a strong female. And uh, but it wasn't like when you're a kid, you know, especially during the '90s. Everybody draw the women, you know, with the arts back, the butts out, boobs out. Everybody's posing, you know, you know, very provocatively and it's just so ridiculous now as an older guy drawing it goes that's really just kind of silly and stupid you know so to draw a female uh lead a strong woman and you know without the arts back and the you know hi i'm here to save the day you know it's, it was really uh it was really pretty cool and um bonnie's a very strong character and uh and and i loved all the action i loved all the heart string and i uh, tugging that went on and I won't lie to you, there was a couple of parts where actually I cried, you know, when I was drawing. Like, I don't want to give too much away, but when, you know, Bonnie, as her older self, was dying and crying on her, on her niece's shoulder. I mean, uh, that was a, to a torture scene to illustrate. But anyway, issue six is the moment we're all looking forward to when she faces Golgotha, who she was destined to do battle with and potentially defeat and uh, get rid of the evil in their world. So I hope everybody picks up the climactic issue. It was 38 pages, and it's wall-to-wall -wall action, and I think everybody will love it. I think we're all looking forward to it. So finally, I know that it's all hush-hush, but Greg, you have been posting these crazy images of DC Metals all over social media, and you too, Scott. You've been sharing them. Can you tell us any juicy bits for what to look forward to? Anything at all? Apart from DC yelling at us for sharing all the juicy bits, <laughs> not 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 really, you know. Uh, there's you know all we get to back up saying is you know this is going to be like it, it's our summer event, and you know what happens is in Hollywood, right? All the all the theaters are filled with the great action films and stuff like that, the most fun stuff that you wait for. You can't wait. Oh, I can't. I can't wait till July. Oh my God, you know. So this event is just like that, except in comic books. So I can't spoil anything, and I wouldn't want to spoil anything, apart from the things I show on Twitter, which are not really spoilery. I control myself. I, I do. I control myself. But it, it's going to be so over the top, doing things that you never envision these characters doing, in ways that you never envision them doing it, in, in places you never envision them being. And I think it's just going to be wall-to-wall -wall fun. And if you don't pick it up, there's really something really wrong with you. You need to, I don't know, get on vitamins, make some antioxidants, you know, talk to a counselor, maybe, you know, delve into what went wrong in your childhood because something is not, clearly not right. You need to pick this book up. Our series is going to be great. And I don't say that tooting my own horn, except for a little, tee -tee, you know, it really is going to be something. Yeah, I mean, my favorite DC events are the ones that are just out of control. And, and I think comparatively, like, you know, Marvel events are terrific. They're usually relatively grounded. And I think DC is known also for the cosmic layer of kind of completely out of control. Like the cosmic tuning fork from Crisis winds up filled with dark magic from this and therefore the multiverse. Like we're going for that <laughs> times two. So I want that thing where it's like everybody from Swamp Thing to Plastic Man to whatever just out of control so I can't I don't want to give away too much I mean the, the, the idea of the dark multiverse sort of is the major concept of it that we haven't talked about too much where it is this thing that they discover exists and it's coming here so it gives a, a tremendous amount of sort of pathos and conflict and crazy crazy war to the book um, but on the other hand it is something that we just want to be bonkers you know so it really is like I want it to be one of those books where every page you turn you're like I can't believe they just did that so I'm going for that feel 100%. So there's dinosaurs and robots, and it's very much out of control. 
Well, there you have it, everybody. Thank you, Scott and Greg, for giving us the inside scoop. Be sure to check out all of their ongoing projects. They're all amazing, and we are so looking forward to DC Metal. This has been Comics First. My name is Nadia. We have been at Five Points Fest, and we'll see you in the Comics First once again.